Welcome to today's tutorial by CAS Academy. Today we will be covering everything you need to know about decimals to pass your AccuPlacer Next Generation Arithmetic exam. Be sure to see the links in the descriptions for the official study guides as well as additional supports and resources to help you pass your exam. With adding and subtracting decimals, you want to align the decimal. So let's look at some problems. Let's say they give you 7 plus 2.04 plus 0 0.3047. So the first thing that you'd want to do is you would want to write them out where you have the decimals all lined up. One thing to keep in mind that when you have your numbers, if you have a whole number without any decimals, there's always an imaginary decimal to the right. And note that you can add zeros to the right of any of your numbers to act, to act as placeholders to help you make sure that you are lining everything up when you're adding. So you'll notice that all of these decimals are lined up and then we place that tells us where we're going to position our numbers for our adding. Now that we've got everything lined up, now we're just going to add. Add the columns. 0 plus 0 plus 7 is 7. 0 plus 0 is 4. 0 plus 4 plus 0 is 4. 0 plus 0 plus 3 is 3. I've got a decimal, so I'm going to put my decimal. 7 plus 2 is 9. So our final answer would be 9.3447. Let's go ahead and do the next problem. The next problem says it is 9 plus 1.057 plus 0 0.6308. So once again, I'm going to line up all of my numbers by the decimal. And then I'm going to add decimals. I'm going to add decimals to the right of any whole numbers. And I'm going to add zeros as placeholders to make sure that that whole block is filled in. And I'm going to make sure that all of my decimals are lined up. That's going to make sure I get my answer correct. And now that I've got everything lined up correctly, now it's just a matter of adding the columns. 0 plus 0 is 8. 0 plus 7 plus 0 is 7. 0 plus 5 plus 3 is 8. 0 plus 0 plus 6 is 6. I'm going to bring down my decimal. 9 plus 1 is 10. So my final answer is 10.6878. It's very important when you're doing these problems, especially ones that have a lot of numbers, make sure that you've got your rows and your columns are clearly defined and that things are lined up correctly. A common mistake is if you don't is to add up the numbers um, in the wrong rows or the wrong columns, and it's just to do with an alignment error because of how you wrote them down when you were rewriting the problem or when you're you're putting it together to do your adding. So that was addition. Now we're going to do the exact same thing but with subtraction. So I'm going to, if I have 8 minus 0 0.03, I'm going to take 8 minus 0 0.03. I'm going to put a decimal to the right of any whole numbers, add zeros as placeholders. Now this is a subtraction problem. So 
I've got 0 minus 3. 0 is smaller than 3, so that means I need to borrow to the left. But we have another 0. Zeros don't have any values, so that means we need to keep borrowing until we get to the next whole number, or the next number that has any value. So the 8 has some value, which means I can take a 1, so I'm going to reduce the 8 to a 7 carry that 1 over to the 0 to make that a 10. Then I'm going to borrow from that 10, make that a 9, and bring that 1 over to make that final 0 a 10. Now I have some numbers with values, so now I can do my actual subtraction. 10 minus 3 is 7. 9 minus 0 is 9. I'm going to bring down my decimal. 7 minus 0 is 7. So once again, you want to make sure all of your decimals are in alignment when you're doing adding and subtracting. Let's do another problem. If I have 10 minus 0 0.0005. I'm going to put a decimal to the right of my whole number and add zeros as placeholders. Now I can do my subtraction. Once again, I am subtracting from Zero. Zeros don't have any values, so that tells me I'm going to need to borrow. I go to the left, I see I have another zero, so I have to keep going until I find a number with some value. This first number has a, is a 1, so I'm going to borrow a 1, make this one a 10, reduce the zero to make, reduce the 1 by 1 makes that zero. Then I'm going to borrow from this 10, make that a 9, and carry over 1 to make that 0, 10. I'm going to borrow a 1 from this one to make that 10. That will reduce to 9. Then I'm going to borrow again, make that 9, bring the 1 over, borrow again, reduce that to 9, and make that a 10. Now I can do my subtraction. 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 0 is 9, 9 minus 0 is 9, 9 minus 0 is 9. Keep my decimals in alignment, 9 minus 0 is 9. So my final answer is 9.9995. Okay, when you are doing your practice problems, if you're making up problems, it's important that you do problems that have, a, have zeros in them because oftentimes zeros have no value, so they behave just a little bit differently than the, the other numbers, and oftentimes that creates um, people make mistakes because they don't really know what to do with those zeros. So that's something to be mindful of. So once again, just to review, when you are adding or subtracting decimals, you're going to align the decimal points. Whole numbers have an imaginary decimal to the right, and you can put zeros to the right of any of your decimals, any of your numbers, to make sure that you can are aligning all of your numbers correctly. Let's look at the last type of problem, and that is multiplying decimals. So when you are multiplying, you do not line up the decimals. You're going to multiple, multiply just like regular. And they're going to keep a number of digits behind point. So there, this is a two-step process for multiplication. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set it up just like a regular problem without the, the decimals.
and any number before the decimal, that is just a placeholder. So you can put it in your problem if you want, or you can just drop it. It's not going to make any difference. So with your multiplication, you align everything to the right, just like you would multiply like regular, align to the right. just like you do when you're doing regular multipl multiplication. And you can leave the decimals in or take the decimals out. It doesn't really matter when you're doing the first step. I usually take them out and then do the second step, but it's, it's purely whatever makes the most sense to you. I think sometimes if you leave the decimals in the, when you're doing the multiplication, sometimes that confuses people. So that's part of why I take them out. So the first thing is we're just doing regular multiplication. 2 times 5 is 10, 5 times 0 is 0, plus 1 does not equal 5, it equals 1, so that's a common mistake. 5 times 0 is 0 plus 1. And I usually like to cross off the anything that I've added so I don't accidentally add it a second time. 5 times 7 is 35. Then I like to put an X as a placeholder instead of zeros to help me to know that I'm supposed to shift. I like using X's because then it's real clear that that is a placeholder, not a part of my problem. And that helps me to know that I have shifted over correctly with my multiplication. Whenever you're doing your multiplication, the numbers that you're starting with, it should align. So like I first started here with this 5, so my first digit went under the 5. Now I'm going to multiply by the 0, so my number needs to go under the 0. 0 times 2 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 7 is 0. Now I'm going to be multiplying by the 3, so I'm going to have two placeholders to tell me that I've shifted over, and then my multiplication is going to go under that 3. 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 7 is 21. Now I'm going to add up my columns. 0 plus x's is going to be 0, 1 plus 0 plus x is 1, 5 plus 0 plus 6 is 11, carry the 1, 3 plus 1 plus zeros are 4, 1 and 2. Okay, so now I've done the multiplication part. The next thing is to count the number of digits behind the decimals in my original problem. So this one in my original problem, I have two digits behind the decimal in the first one, three digits in the third. That gives me a total of five. So that tells me I'm going to go to the right and I'm going to count five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. And that tells me where am I going to put my decimal? So that's how you figure out decimals. If you catch the decimals in your problem, you can do the same thing. You're going to count the number of digits behind the decimal, and that tells you how many that goes over. So you can either just add them. I like to add them from the original problem just so I keep the multiplication and the decimal separate. Um, or you can keep them in your problem. Just make sure that you're not aligning with that decimal or that's going to throw your problem off. Okay, let's do another multiplication problem. So if I have 4.096 times 0 0.803, let's go ahead and write that as a regular multiplication problem. 
4096 0803 multiplication. So with this problem, I'll show you what it looks like if I had ke if I kept the decimals in. You'll notice it's not going to make any difference. So this problem just happens to have them aligned, but they don't need to be aligned. Where we're looking for our alignment is right here, that the numbers need to be lined up to the right. So now I'm going to do my multiplication just like regular. 6 times 3 is 18, 9 times 3 is 27, plus 1 is 28. 3 times 0 plus 2 is 2. 3 times 4 is 12. Put in my x as a placeholder. 0 times 6 is 0. 0 times 9 is 0. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. Then I'm going to put in two placeholders because now I'm multiplying by the 8. 8 times 6 is 48. 8 times 9 is 72 plus 4 it makes it 76. 8 times 0 is 0 plus 7 is 7. 8 times 4 is 32. And just for funsies, we'll do that last row because I'll show you how it's not going to make any difference if you put that placeholder. 0 times 6 is 0, 0 times 9 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 4 is 0. So you'll see that 0 is just a placeholder, and if I included it in my problem, it's just going to give me a row of zeros. So like I said, that 0 before the decimal is just a placeholder that can just be dropped. So now that we've done our multiplication, now we're going to add 8. 8 plus 0 is 8. 2 plus 8 is 10. 6 plus 2 is 8. Plus 1 is 9. 7 plus 1 is 8. 2 and 3. Okay, so now I need to count my decimals in order to figure out where that decimal goes. So if you put your decimal in your problem, you can count it here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six decimal places, or you can count it from your original problem. There's three there, there's three there. That gives me a total of six. So I'm going to start here on the right. Count six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that tells me where my decimal should go. So my final answer would be 3.289088. So that's everything you should need to know in order to pass the decimal section of your arithmetic AccuPlacer exam. Best of luck to you. I hope you have found this video helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe to get the latest videos by CAS Academy. And be sure to see the links in the description to get additional supports and resources, as well as the official study guides from AccuPlacer. Best of luck to you on your AccuPlacer arithmetic exam, and I'll see you at the next video.